Um, it's the first one. Yes, perfect. So I, I will talk about open data challenge. Uh, maybe some of you knows about open data. Maybe not. Uh, open data is to make data available for everybody. Okay, and uh, what we are providing is a platform running on uh, uh, OpenShift that can allow any provider to deploy an open data platform. So what is an open data? For example, for the French government, you've got open data, it's a, it's a law in France. You need to provide data about financial, uh, uh, your financial account uh, subject, about uh, your subventions, about uh, number of people living in your, in your city. Uh, data about uh, transportation, any kind of data can be open to the public. Uh, you've got another one there, which is the French uh, 5G deployment in France. So that's the law. So most of the entity needs to provide data uh, as open data. Open data is also sharing data between people. Okay, meaning uh, you can go, you can take the data, you can uh, offer new service for those data. For example, you can develop a smartphone application, okay, uh, which is called reusage of the data. So this you can do. You can also access to the data using API. So we need to provide also an API infrastructure so that development companies can use the API to connect not to the database, but to a data request, HTTP request, and get the data. And we have lots of website examples. I, I put some here so that uh, when you can download letters, uh, PowerPoint, you can have some, some example. So I will tell you about the first open data application. Maybe you know this. It's the Cholera Discovery. It's uh, 1854. And uh, this is how Jon Snow discovered where people get the cholera, simply because he put all the cholera cases on a map, and he just discovered there was um, a pump water around this. So which means open data interest is also crossing data from various databases, okay? And putting it on a map, it's very easy, and trying to analyze your data and find out something. Uh, you have a lot of uh, application now. People put uh, where you have some accident in your city to, map, to, to provide to people some maps about where it's dangerous to run bicycle, where it's dangerous to walk, and so on. So our open data architecture, so for this, I needed uh, Dilbert to, to help me. And I need to understand what is an open data architecture. We, my platform, we use CCAN. Some of you know CCAN. You can raise the hand if you know it. Nobody, so it's a good day for you. Uh, so CCAN is the number one open data infrastructure. Uh, we, the front end, we are using Drupal. I guess most of you know Drupal, right? Thank you, I'm safe. And uh, we use our BI platform Vanilla, ETL, to ingest, to connect to any database and ingest the data into the second database. And we use Vanilla BI to uh, develop dashboard. We provide also uh, a K-Clock. I guess you know K-Clock as a, an EAM infrastructure and other subjects. So that's our data for citizen open infra. Again, some website example. Uh, Par Paris Grand Est, region of uh, Grand, pa sorry, uh, Grand Paris. You will hear a lot about Grand Paris because in two years we have the Olympic Games. Um, region Grand Est, also some uh, just very close from Germany. So all those websites are always about data, so data visualization, data on map, data publication. And because we, we had some interesting success in France, now we needed to improve our deployment strategy, our maintenance strategy, all those things that goes when uh, you start having success with your application that you start on your own computer, and after you have to deploy it on many different instances. 
So how did we do this? First, we move simply from a single base server installation to virtual machine. Okay, and it was four years ago. Huh? Before, for us, all those things, uh, we, we never use it, okay? And we like it, really, Proxmox. Some of you maybe know Proxmox, okay? It's very nice. We started with Proxmox 5. Now we are in Proxmox 6. It's on top of Debian or something like this. My team is happy with this. If my team is happy, it's first good things, okay? And my customer also are happy, so I guess uh, my life is better. And after we moved last, two years ago to image, so we start, and there was some development change, but don't ask me which, which one, okay? It's our deal together. So my team changed something in the software, so now we are able to deploy as image docker. And we had a large project with one uh, French region, and they found us the OpenShift migration. Okay, otherwise we will not do it, to be clear with you. We stay on Docker, we don't know how it, how it works really. Uh, but moving to OpenShift, deployment and platform of that are really easy. Okay, uh, all the burden about updating uh, the platform, saving the data, all those things. We have uh, some, some dozen of instances. All is done very, very easily. So. Again, moving to Proxmox, even we were happy with Proxmox, to uh, uh, OpenShift was a nice path for us, okay? We, we, we took this way and at the end it's okay. What we have now, we have image of Data for Citizen, our open data platform, and we have also an image of Vanilla, which is our business intelligence and ETL platform. Okay, it's all deployed on OpenShift. It's running pretty well. You've got here an example of what we do. You connect with Vanilla on any kind of application. You put it, uh, you build visualization, maps, all those things. And after you can communicate with any open data platform and also provide your data as API so that people can connect on your database. Okay. We, we have intent, interfaces and we have what we call pod. A pod is like a, a small uh, number of image. Some of you may know this. Uh, and uh, to start a new instance of uh, Data for Citizen now, it's just running a script and you have it ready in like uh, maybe less than five minutes. Before when there was a virtual machine new instance, you need to copy the virtual machine master, you need to change the IP uh, configuration of the machine. It, it's a little longer, let's say less than one day. And now we can have a new application up in less than 10 minutes, which is really, really easy. And we, we also add new image because you find it very easily on uh, Docker Hub or other Docker repository. So for example, we added Lime Survey Maybe some of you know Lime Survey. It's a platform to build survey and collect data. So it's very clever in an open data application because uh, using Lime Survey, you can build survey and ask the citizen to answer to some uh, information. We can also collect data now uh, using uh, um, OpenStreetMap. And so people, for example, if they want to declare that somewhere there is uh, some trash in the street or something like this, they can use the survey, uh, point to a specific area and say, here there is something, uh, please uh, do something or, or, or act to, to, to clean the street or something like this. Okay. And all this is running on a container, public or private hybrid cl cloud, we are now deploying on OVH. It's a French, uh, you saw them uh, somewhere here. They are not here. Boo! Uh, so, okay. Uh, so we deploy on OVH. We are happy with OVH, after, except when Strasbourg was burning. Maybe you've heard about this. They did not tell you, but uh, we, we, we lost some, some server also at that time. Uh, but basically, we are happy with OVH. Uh, it's easy to deploy, it's easy to manage. 
Um, I have no stock option in OVH, so I can talk freely about this. Um, that's it, okay? So we, we, we have our inside uh, infrastructure to, to develop, and for any of our customers, we deploy on OVH. Uh, also because it's a French uh, uh, provider, and most of our customers are French government, so they ask us to host in France, which is normal, okay? Uh, France or Europe, there is always some discussion about this, uh, but basically we, we, don't, we don't move like this. Okay, so some OpenShift uh, interfaces. So this one, I saw it yesterday for those who was in the low key, uh, okay, it was exactly the same. Uh, here it's me, I just give words. I know nothing, you know, I want container, I want Kubernetes, all those things. I want to have my development team very happy, the infra team very happy, and customer very happy, okay? And with this kind of interface, let's say we go, okay? And we, we provide good results. What we can do, we can now deploy large data sets uh, of, uh, of data, we deploy uh, data using geo data infrastructure. Uh, we do real-time integration. And before, when you use uh, some single uh, server, we have some memory problems. We had sometimes some crash. I should not tell it publicly, but it happens before. And, and now moving, honest, moving now to this kind of infrastructure, uh, it's less. It can happen, I don't know, my team did not tell it to me, my customer don't call me, so I feel more happy. Uh, so we can directly uh, ingest data in real time, which is very nice, and put the data, for example, on the map. Here it's something very nice, if you go to this website, which is La Rochelle, I encourage all of you to go to La Rochelle in holiday, it's a nice city, and if you go to La Rochelle, like here in Berlin, you can have, um, uh, bicycle, and this is a real-time bicycle availability, okay? It's updated every five minutes. So if you want, if you have the smartphone application, because somebody developed a smartphone application with those data, okay, uh, you can see where is uh, the next bicycle available, or you can see where is the free spaces to drop your bicycle, all those things, okay? So it's very easy to, to use. What we do also, is we provide API. So to manage the success, for example, of La Rochelle with the API, we deploy also Gravity. Don't know if some of you knows Gravity. It's an API management tool, okay? That allow, if you register with uh, this uh, uh, mega city, they will give you an API key. And so you can request many API requests every day. Uh, if you don't register, maybe you have a limitation to 10 or, or 20 requests per day. So that uh, you, you, we limit with this people who just request, request, request to have the server dropping down. Okay? So with Gravity, we are really, really happy also with this. And uh, Gravity also deploys in uh, OpenShift. I mean, it's an image. So all things is very consistent, uh, easy to insert new new services. I will not tell you about microservices or something, but it's kind of new services. And uh, we just have some configuration file, adding new plan in Gravity, and after it's okay. We, we were able to set new application and new services. For example, it's a real-time uh, activity for firemen in the south of France. Okay, it can be useful, it is useful. Okay, and we can also have some um, dashboard. And the other one, this one is uh, an example of you put two or three different uh, data, data set on, on a map. For example, you can put the camping data set with the restaurant data set, with the lake data set, and to see where is the best camping you can go. Okay, if you want to have a a glass of wine uh, or something like this, and after, uh, swimming the lake, okay? That's an image, but this is just to image my speech, and maybe you have something clever to do, okay? You just take all your data and you put it on a map. Unfortunately, last slide, 
customer is not really happy with uh, OKD because of the price. Nobody from Red Hat here, so sorry. Uh, it's running perfectly, yeah? believe me, but it's very really expensive. So they ask us now to say, okay, it's a simple application just to display data. It's not nuclear application. It's not health application. It's, not, it's something honest that can stop during 10 minutes, if, if you understand my word, okay? So uh, we don't need something 100% uh, available. If it's 99.90, it's okay, okay? So can you, you evaluate what's the cost human side to go from OpenShift to Kubernetes? And so now we are in a process to install a Kubernetes infra uh, just to to see if it works or not. The, um, the scripts are all, almost all the same. There is no problem. That's my, what my team told me. It's just uh, knowledge. We have to, because we like OKD, the interface is OK, so we have to, to learn a new kind of interface. And again, it's just for a cost strategy from my customer side. And also, uh, it's better also to deploy in other country, and other region, because if you can only with OKD, sometimes some people tell you, okay, for this kind of application, uh, it's, uh, it's maybe too, too expensive. Second thing, uh, now because of this uh, new application, we have a vanilla BI platform available on OKD and Kubernetes. So before also with vanilla, when we started a new project, it's like one or two days to set up a new infrastructure. Now it's 10 minutes. Okay. I go beyond my time. I'm sorry. Uh, do you have any question? No? Thank you very much. Thank you. I will picture you, you know, because I know some people are there. <laughs> there was people. Thank you very much. <laughs>